Hello, I'm Mos Gen. And I'm Daniel, and welcome to Art Talks for Beginners. If you're wondering whether a painting is by Dabi or Dali, then you're in the right place. Welcome. Welcome. This looks it... like a depressing one. Okay, is it? Yeah. Okay, I Maybe believe we have, to, we have to go with your feelings on this one. Or you should go like I don't trust you, that's the problem. <laughs> oh, so you just, you just think that we're going to have a happy painting and you will think that it's, it's going to be sad? Maybe. I mean, the thing with <laughs> art is, art is always about something, some human problem. So I'm always, yeah, a little bit There's nervous. always something bad in it. It's not about love, ever. It's always about tragedy. We can get a Rococo if you want. Yeah. <laughs> what do you see? Tell us. So it looks like a field. I mean... Yeah, the style is very difficult to sort of make out. It's hard to see what's happening in mm -hmm. the painting because of the style, I think. Mm -hmm. So it looks like there is a path maybe going between two corn fields, I guess, mm -hmm. some yellow um, plant in there. I see birds, I think, in the center flying off in towards the top right. And then it looks like maybe a night sky or evening, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Quite dark. Yeah, quite That dark. makes you... That makes you feel like it's it's the night time. Foreboding and depression coming mm -hmm. in. Something. Okay. Yeah, maybe. All right. Is it just one way you see one path? Uh, oh, no, actually. No, there is one path in the center, but it looks like... Oh, the perspective is a bit strange. It looks like it's coming around mm -hmm. and then over there, but here there's maybe a path. It's too. actually three paths yeah, there. three. One on the left, one in the middle, one on the right. So it's, it's a crossroads. It's not so clear there. Maybe. Oh, more or less, you can feel like it's a crossroads. You might feel that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we can go with the field as well. That is a wheat field. I was right. Yeah, well, it's, I said it's, corn, maybe. Yeah, you said corn, but it, it's a wheat field. So it's it's a field. It's out in the open, we see. And the sky, you see, you thought that it's night sky. Probably it's because it's a lot of black in it. Yeah, true. That made you feel like it's, like it's night, night sky. Like night is coming. Mm. Yeah, but it's more like a stormy sky, actually. Uh -huh. Lighter areas in the sky, too. Yeah, they, these are clouds. The darkness comes through the storm, approaching storm. When you have to tell me that they're clouds, and when you have to tell me that it's a storm, then I know that I'm looking at a painting which is maybe not academic, because they would show that in a very, a more clear way. I'm thinking. Okay, so you just, you have a clue that it's not academic this time? I think so. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can think about your feelings about this painting. What does it create in you? How do you feel when you look at this painting? I think the darkness is kind of a little bit overwhelming in a way. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it doesn't make me feel hopeful for sure. I don't okay. feel hopeful looking at it. I feel a little bit more like maybe I'm lost. Maybe I'm, mm -hmm. I've gone for a walk and I'm trying to find my way home and I'm going in through the countryside and I need to find, yeah, my way back. And yeah, I'm going to get caught in the rain. <laughs> There's a storm coming. Yes, it, it doesn't give you comfort. It's not I, comforting. I understand. No, it's a little bit, uh, yeah, uncomfortable. It has a bit of a gloomy sense. But it depends though. There are two different analyses about this painting. Okay. Uh, so we will just review both of them. Was mine and right? Yours is one of them. Yours is one of them. A little bit more darker view on, on, on what, the, what the painting wants to tell us. Mm -hmm. But we, we never know why. Uh, maybe you can guess the painter. I believe this is, a, this is an easy one to guess. Yeah, I think I know who it is. It's Van Gogh. I guess. Yes, actually, it's, it's a Van Gogh. And it's, it's an easy one to guess. And that is the beauty of Van Gogh, I believe. To, to see it and to recognize it so easily. Mm -hmm. it, it, his, his paintings are so so much of his signatures, so you can easily notice them. I wonder what, that is a Van Gogh. What is it in the painting that screams Van Gogh to me? So The technique. I believe okay. it's the technique and the colors. We will get to that more. Let's okay. let's move into the story first yeah. and then, then review the technique. Mm -hmm. So what's the story behind this painting then? This one is an interesting one. Uh, it is thought to be one of the last paintings that Van Gogh painted before he died in 1890, mm -hmm. in July, in the same month he died. Actually, he committed suicide. Uh -huh. uh, that's why it's a special one. And because it is thought to be the very last painting, uh, it is considered as a suicide note. Mm -hmm, like a swan song. Yeah, it's the last last thing he left to us, something like that. So it's a lot of speculation about that. Mm -hmm. We don't actually know if it's the last one because some of the art historians they claim that there's few more paintings after this he did. Mm -hmm. So so we don't clearly know this if this is the really last one. So it's a lot of doubt on this. Okay. But still, it was for a long time it was considered as a suicide note mm -hmm. uh, that is left to us by Van Gogh. 
doesn't sound very optimistic yet. No, no. So that 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 one, when you consider it as a suicide note, it actually matches with the analysis you made. Exactly, the depressing. Yes, mm. uh, because we know that uh, Van Gogh has suffered some mental illness, which is more like a manic depression condition, mm -hmm. and he has first lived in Paris, then moved to all south south of France, and after that he had a fight with Gauguin, the very famous painter Gauguin. Mm. And then he cut his ear after this, he threatened Gauguin, Gauguin left him. And after that, he just lost his, his personal mental balance, we can say. And he was, he was taken to a sanatorium in San Remy and stayed there. After that, he left the sanatorium and he felt a little bit better about his mental stability. And then he moved to over mm -hmm. Uh It is another small town Impressive. where he had a doctor close by and he was closer to his brother. Uh, so he wanted to live there and just get more peace and a better life condition Recover. with more recovery, mm -hmm. with, with more sun and everything. But his situation, his condition didn't get, get any better. Mm -hmm. And he died uh, after a short while as well, seven months, I believe, seven months after he moved to Oversawas. So this is one of his last paintings. And it is thought to be a, a message from Van Gogh that he's approaching his end. Mm -hmm. That's why we see him in front of this wheat field mm -hmm. and there are three paths but none of these paths has an ending that yeah, is the analysis especially the one in the middle is abruptly ending mm -hmm. in the middle of the field so when when people look at this they they believe that van gogh understood that he actually came to the end of his life and he couldn't continue anymore so he wanted to express this in the sense like he made peace with the idea of him finishing yes his, okay. exactly he's just saying goodbye to life right so that's how it's interpreted i understood this middle road is going a bit like curving to the left and then to the right mm -hmm. i thought it went around there but now when you say that it stops i think i, I can see that I yeah, it looks like a winding road so you winding, might feel yeah. like is it a winding road so we don't see the end of it but i mean th these are just interpretations right. i can say so you may still choose to see it that way, mm -hmm. but especially since the other ways, the other two paths are, we don't see the end of them. They don't reach anywhere. Mm -hmm. There is no goal why you follow this path. So it just feels like it is the end of his life. Mm -hmm. And on top of this, the people who believe that that's a suicide note, they also look at the sky, the storm approaching. It's very dark, a lot of blacks that is used in this black color. Mm -hmm. It also creates a sense of death. And on top of this, the the birds you see there, yeah, they are crows, actually. Are crows, okay. Yes. And crows are more associated generally with death and everything that is sinister. Right. So that also is a symbol of death in the sense. Mm -hmm. When you look at it that way, you see that, okay, he also sees the crows as well. And they, they're just... It is not clear, though, if they're moving, flying towards us or moving away from us. But in, in, in every sense, it just creates something that is darker hmm, associated gonna, with the storm and end of life. I was going to say it feels like they're flying away. There's like the flight um, towards flight into death. You can feel it as a sense of afterlife or freedom, mm -hmm. a sense of relief mm -hmm. you might feel. So when you look at this, you can just make a lot of associations. But this, this dark analysis tells us that he, he understood that he's not going to get any better in life. And then according to this theory, he just he just shot himself. Mm -hmm. He ended his life. So you said there's a theory that this is the very last painting that he painted. Mm -hmm. Did he kill himself immediately afterwards? Is that the thinking? That is what people believe. The, the believers of this theory, uh, they believe that he painted this and then he killed himself. And it also matches with how he killed himself, how it's believed that he killed himself, actually. Because he, he killed himself out in the field. That's, that's what uh -huh. people believe. Okay. Because he used to live in the small town and he used to go outside the town to to the nature to get inspiration and then paint there and come back in the evening to his to his apartment to mm -hmm. his house so that was his element he was, yes he was yes he was working in nature more mm. so it is thought that he was out in the field and he shot himself and he walked all the way back to his house and seeing after, that shooting, his, himself. after shooting himself mm -hmm. he didn't die and after seeing him in blood, in covered in blood, his landlord called his brother, who was living in another oh, God, city. Wow. So his brother Theo came to where did he shoot himself? Where, was. Huh? where did he shoot himself? In I believe in the chest somewhere, in the chest, in the in the body somewhere in That's the not body. How you kill yourself? In the torso. Okay. 
So, uh, and he didn't die. Mm. And then his brother arrived the next day. When he arrived, Van Gogh was still alive. Wow. And the doctor came in the middle. While before, before his, his brother came, the doctor came mm -hmm. and saw him, but he couldn't take the bullet out because he didn't have enough tools and everything. And they just saw that he's still living, his bleeding stopped, so they felt like he's okay now. Okay. And then his brother came the next day, but after a lot of internal bleeding and because of infection, mm -hmm. he died after his brother came. It's mm -hmm. so sad, he actually lived almost one, one and a half days, almost two days after, after he shot, shot himself. Maybe, he, maybe really somebody shot him though, if it's in the chest. We don't know. We don't know. There are some other theories that the children playing nearby shot him by mistake, or we don't truly know. There are tons of different stories about yeah. this. A lot of books written about this, movies made about this, mm. but we truly don't know why. Uh, but it makes sense with the reading of the ending, like you said. Yes, very much. That very much. Sense. That's why that's why people believe that it's a it's a suicide note. Mm -hmm. And one of, his, the, one of the last things he said to his brother was, sadness will last forever. Mm -hmm. He said this to his brother and he died. We know all these things because of the records we have. Right. So it's just he has this continuous sense of sad, sadness that just keeps on coming back to him. So mm -hmm. he, he has very happy period, more manic periods, and then the very, very sad, very depressing, depressing mm -hmm. periods as well. So that's why it's thought to be this was... The, the beginning of a very depressing period again and then he ended his life that's what is believed wow so it's it's a it's a very tragic story actually mm. if he had enough uh, equipment to save him he could have been saved yeah that and also the the sort of failure on the mental illness like it could have been treated in a better way perhaps earlier yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely in a much much better way but that's the negative reading then. Is, yes. there, is there a more, you said there's a more positive reading? Yes, there is a positive reading as well. It is more focusing on the color, for example. Color yellow mm -hmm. is something that Van Gogh really, really loved very much. And he used it in the sunflowers, for example, very mm -hmm. famous sunflowers. And, or he painted a lot of wheat fields uh, with a lot of yellow color in it. And he owned the color yellow and he loved it very much. And he mentioned in his letters to his brother, that, he, that yellow gives him a good energy, he mm -hmm. likes it very much. So when you see a lot of yellow color in the painting, it, it, that's why some people still believe that it's a positive uh, positive uh, painting. That because it's his signature color. Yes, because he likes it. it. Right. And about the stormy skies, he loved to paint stormy skies because, because it's a lot of movement, so he can just show mm -hmm. his technique in a it's much, dynamic. much better way. Mm -hmm. And about the crows, uh, again, it was one of his fa favorite birds. Mm -hmm. He thought that crows were very intelligent and he just loved them as well. So that's why the positive reading is okay. Uh, this looks a little bit gloomy mm -hmm. at first glance, but how do we know that that's a suicide note? Maybe it was another painting that he, he painted. It's like taking elements of the things he liked to paint yes, together. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Saying that these are happy elements that they used to like a lot. So he combined them in, within, within another painting. That's, that's it. It's a little bit difficult to say this this is the very last one he painted and it's a suicide note. Mm. But I believe it's 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 a good story to sell about Van Gogh when you say, okay, this is the last one he left to us as a as a goodbye message. As a suicide note, yeah. Yeah, no. It's, it's interesting it's that it has it, it plays the role of two very different uh, yeah, stories. It can be either, which is an interesting yes. way to so we talked about this style being very recognizable mm -hmm. and very easily identifiable yes. as Van Gogh. What is it about? Talk to me more about the technique. How do we... uh, this, this one is from the movement we call post-impressionism. Mm -hmm. So when you first look at it, you may feel it's close to impressionism in one sense because it doesn't have a very clear surface finish. You see a lot of brush strokes, but the brush strokes you see in post-impressionism is different than impressionism. In impressionism, we see more short and rapid brush strokes. Here okay. we see more wide more prominent brush strokes mm -hmm. and we see large areas of flat color single color in, okay. in large areas this is very typical post-impressionist we can see contours for example that we don't see so much here though you can see really contours that is putting the boundaries of objects with, with oh, like dark outline. color yeah outline mm -hmm. you can say yes so that we don't see here much but we see a lot of impasto mm -hmm. which are points where you get like uh, bulk paint on, on, on canvas, we see, paint on the canvas, especially on the, on the stormy skies mm -hmm. there on top. And the painter also uses his brush strokes to create dynamism. And 
create the sense of movement to us. When you look at the wheat, wheat field, for example, you see that there's some wind coming yeah, true, yeah. and the wheat is, is actually moving from side to side. Mm. And this, this feeling is created by these diagonal breast strokes that mm -hmm. the painter put around, around the wheat field. Or you can, you can feel the direction of the world much better when you follow the brush strokes again. So mm -hmm. brush strokes is everything. Right. And also Van Gogh's brush strokes is very prominent and very much of a signature. They look very deliberate. Yes. In a way. It's not, I think, in Impressionism, it's a, it seems a bit more... Small, small things that is yeah. like applied on the surface very quickly. In this one, it's like very deliberate, as you yeah. say. Like, mm. I put this here and this, mm. and then I create this shape with those brush strokes. So because of that, you get, in, even in small areas like here, you mm -hmm. get this, this is sort of swirl because of that. You see the, it uh, like draws the eye down and around, and it, I guess it would be good for painting a seascape. Yes, seascape or skies or, or sense of movement in the air, mm. In, mm. in the sea, you can easily create with post-impressionist yeah. brush strokes. One thing also Van Gogh did is he never blended colors on a palette. Most mm. of the time he even used them out from the tube, put them directly on the brush and just put it on the easel uh -huh. in the canvas. So uh, that's that's something of his, his signature as well. So you see, you don't see so much blends of colors in Van Gogh. It's, it's simple yellow, simple mm. blue, simple greens. They put together and create some different color effects, okay. but they're not blended. There is something very special about Van Gogh, actually, is that he is a self-taught artist. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any prior education. And what he produced us within the very short life period of 37 years, he painted only in the last 10 years of his life. Oh, wow. And during this 10 year period where he painted, he left us more than 2000 images wow. and 800 letters he wrote to his brother. Prolific. So this amazing amount of work, Production, this yeah. one single guy did in his, in his life. I it's amazing that's... that you have, it's a bit like a kind of Mozart equivalent, you get this sort of mega genius. I yes. mean, in those 10 years, he produced that much, first of all, but also was such an influential character for yes. later artists yes. and for all of the art movement. Everybody knows who Van Gogh is. Exactly. And on top of all this, I mean, all this genius behind, he did have this mental condition, exactly. which probably hindered him. Mm. To, to develop himself, improve more or live more to, to create more to, mm. to the world. He couldn't do that. And on top of all of this, what we can say is he's so well known in, in, in art. He has influenced so many others, but he couldn't sell a painting in his life. I believe it's only two or three paintings of this were actually sold during his lifetime. Because it's not the popular style or what is the... It wasn't. I believe it wasn't appreciated at the time mm. when he was he was painting these things. But after he died and his brother died, his brother's wife starts selling his paintings. She's mm -hmm. a real entrepreneur, I can say. She either. made him famous. Okay. Joe, this is this is this is the woman behind Van Gogh's popularity today. So you said this was painted in 1890, just before Van Gogh died. If mm -hmm. I want to go and see it, where do I travel? You need to go to Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Van Gogh is a, is a Dutch painter, and this one is in the Van Gogh Museum in in Amsterdam. There you can see it. Great. And how big is it? It looks quite long. It this... is a long painting because it is two square canvases put together. Uh -huh. It is 50 centimeters by one one meter, so two. 50 by 50 canvases they put together mm -hmm. and they made a longer painting. So and it's one is... meter by a half meter? Yes. Okay. That's all for today on Van Gogh's painting Wheat Field with Crows. Thank you very much for watching us. Stick around for more colour coordination with the painting. <laughs> yeah, I just put it on because of Van Gogh actually. This is his favourite colour. And your favourite painter maybe. Yes, also. <laughs> <laughs> and stay tuned for Art Talks for Beginners. Thank you.